Hey, welcome back to the channel. I am really glad you're here. Now, today's video is a bit different because it is Chevy Silverado specific. It may apply to some other GM vehicles. It may even apply to some other brands. But if you have a 2014 to 2018 Silverado, uh, you may be glad you're here too. Now, I've been having a problem with this truck and uh, I've looked all over the internet and it seems to be pretty common. What's been happening is that the radiator fans kick into high speed and they just run and run and run and when you turn the truck off they still run for like another five minutes the other problem is that the temperature gauge drops down to zero or in this case 160 which is the lowest setting on the gauge but the gauge basically stops functioning and just drops all the way down and the air conditioner stops working as well now i thought i fixed the problem but after about a week or so it came back so the first thing I did was I changed this temperature sensor and that's what people on the internet say is to change that sensor because something's going wrong. It's going into fault mode and causing all this havoc. So easy change. I changed the sensor. I used my uh, inexpensive Harbor Freight code reader and reset the codes and everything seemed fine. Now I don't drive this truck that often so it took a week or more before the problem showed its face again. I was totally stumped. I read more on the internet and a lot of people said change the thermostat, which did not make sense to me because the thermostat is not an electronic item, it's a mechanical item. So I didn't understand why that would really cause this to have a problem. And then I started looking at the temperature gauge as I was driving and I of course read more about it. And uh, the problem that I was having then is the temperature was not reaching optimum operating temperature, which is 210 degrees, top dead center, on the temperature gauge. It was only reaching about a quarter of the way up. It wouldn't reach full temperature. So I think what was happening is this unit was actually doing its job. It was telling me something is wrong. The truck is not reaching operating temperature and that affects the uh, mileage. It affects the fuel injection, these computers, you know. But anyway, this was telling me something was wrong. So I think it actually is the thermostat because what's happening is it's not closing or it's stuck open maybe and it's not letting the engine get warm enough so I'm gonna change the thermostat and see what that does but uh, I'm pretty confident that this is the problem because of watching that temperature gauge so let's change the thermostat pretty simple to do and we'll see what happens these little pieces of step scaffolding are really nice to work from because these trucks sit up pretty high in the front at least for working on. The thermostat is right here at the end of this big hose. The truck has cooled off, so now there's no pressure in the system, so hopefully I won't lose too much antifreeze. This is the new thermostat. I picked it up locally at Advanced Auto. It's got a plastic housing, uh, and the thermostat is built in, so it's not like the old days where you took off the housing and replaced the thermostat. This is all one piece, so I'm going to take the old one out, three bolts, and put this one in. First, we have to take this air duct off so I can get to it and that should be relatively easy too. Big old hose clamp there. Loosen that up. Is that all that holds this? It is. There's a piece over here that we want to take off. Oh, there's a little button on the bottom you push. You pull that off. And then this pulls back. And I can just oh, push that up out of the way rather than take it off completely. I just flip this up, stuck a bungee cord, wrapped it around, and that'll keep that out of my way for right now. And the thermostat is right there, right out in the wide open. Of course, you want to start by disconnecting your negative battery terminal because you don't want your fans to kick on while you're under here working. And after you do that, there's a couple little hoses, or a couple hoses to pull off. This one is the overflow. Oh, a little bit of pressure in there still, not too much. And then this hose is the big radiator hose. Pull this back. Come on. Put the pliers this way, it'll help. There we go. Now before I take this big hose off, 
I'm going to take off the uh, bolts for the thermostat. They're just three 10 millimeter bolts. Of course, they're 10 millimeter. Everything's 10 millimeter. Loosen, loosen, loosen. So I'm losing a little bit of antifreeze, so make sure you pick up a bottle of Dexcool, which is the orange stuff designed for GM and maybe other vehicles, but uh, this truck has an aluminum block, so you're supposed to use Dexcool for the aluminum block. All right, we're gonna do this quickly so that we lose as little antifreeze as possible. Do you call it antifreeze or do you call it coolant? I mean, I know it's both, but I think some people default to one term or the other. Now this has a built-in O-ring, so there's no lubricant needed or anything. Uh, I'll wipe a little bit of coolant antifreeze on it. Pull it out, get that up out of the way. Drop the new one in, oh, there's the old O-ring, we want to make sure we get that off, because we don't want that to mess things up. Looks nice and clean, feels good. A new one. Drops in like that. And start putting screws in. Well, they're bolts, I guess. You have to crush that o-ring so just tighten each one up a little bit at a time and these were not super tight so I'm gonna leave it at that and hopefully this will come off easy enough yep. One. Go back on there. That's in place. And our little overflow. I'm not seeing any indications of mechanical failure on this old thermostat, but who knows, maybe there's a gasket or an O-ring in there that is cracked and maybe uh, coolant is leaking by. Uh, I don't know, but at any rate, um, we're gonna finish putting this back together and let it warm up. Now, just to show you, if you were to change this temperature sensor, that is located to the left of the thermostat and it has a plug that you just squeeze and pull the electrical connector off and then this backs right out goes back in it has a um, copper gasket so I didn't use any kind of sealant or anything on there either and just screwed it right in and again so simple maybe you want to change both at the same time uh, I gotta say though if this works I would uh, start with the thermostat because I think the temperature sensor was actually doing its job. Right, let's put this back in. I think I was a little bit low anyway, because there's the full cold line, and uh, it's pretty low. I didn't lose that much, so it was probably low before.
a warm spring day, so all the motorcycles are out. Now I'm just going to dry up any little splashes that I made. We'll start it up and check for leaks and then take it for a ride. See how our temperature gauge does. And then check for leaks again when it's hot. Now I've already reset the codes because uh, uh, because I wanted my air conditioner to work earlier. So the codes are reset. If you replace these parts, uh, you're going to still have the codes in there, so it's still going to be running those fans like crazy. Right now my air conditioner fan is running. So I reset the codes already. Um, I think that it will reset in time if you don't have a way to reset those codes. So you may have to drive around for a while and wait for it to reach full temperature and then it, it might realize everything's okay and reset itself. If not, uh, find a friend with a code reader and have them reset it or stop at a garage or pick up your own. Uh, cheap one is, well, a cheap one is pretty cheap. So uh, that's one option. But anyway, let's, uh, let's take this for a ride and see where that gauge ends up. Wanna go for a ride? Hachiko loves going for rides, right buddy? Let's go. Now I haven't even gotten out of my driveway and that is where the gauge was topping out before. No matter how far I drove, it would top out right there. So let's go down the road and see if it goes up to 210. Well, there it is. I drove two miles, and within two miles, it reached 210 degrees. And then I drove, well, another two miles back, and it didn't go above that. So it is pegged top dead center, right where it should be, and has not fluctuated. Well, I'm going to call this a success. And my advice to you, if you're having the same problem, I would start with the thermostat. I know that the temperature sensor seems like the logical starting point, but I... Like I said, I don't think mine was bad. I think it was doing its job. It was telling me there was something wrong. So I would start with the thermostat. It was about, I don't know, $60 or so. And then you got a gallon of the uh, orange antifreeze, Dex Cool, like another $20. And if you do change the sensor, you're in for about $100 total. So maybe change them both. But I really think the problem was that thermostat. Now, of course, I won't know for a while, but I'm really confident. Seeing that gauge, I, I've been watching it now for a couple of weeks, and seeing that gauge not reach 210, I'm very confident that was it. I also read there are some codes that get thrown, and I did read the code. It was like a P128. Don't quote me on that. I don't know what it was, but uh, I think it even said engine not reaching temperature. So there it is, a really easy fix that you can do yourself, and I hope that it works for you. I sure hope it works for me. And believe me, if the problem comes back, I'll give an update. But for now, we're gonna call this a success.